In this video, I am going to talk about the mammary gland or the breast. The breast is a modified sweat gland which is an example of an apocrine gland. This is present in both the sexes but it is rudimentary in males. It forms an important accessory organ of female reproductive system which serves the function of nutrition to the babies by breastfeeding. The mammary gland lies in the superficial fascia of pectoral region. The outer and lateral quadrant of the mammary gland, it extends into the axilla forming the axillary tail of spens. The extent of the mammary gland, we see it vertically and horizontally. Vertically, it extends from second to sixth ribs and horizontally, the mammary gland extends from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid-axillary line. The floor of the mammary gland it's formed in the medial two-thirds by the pectoralis major muscle, lateral one-third by the serratus anterior and inferomedially by the external oblique aponeurosis. So these three muscles, it forms the mammary bed, means the structures or the muscles on which the mammary gland is resting. So these structures that is pectoralis major, serratus anterior and the external oblique aponeurosis, it is separated by the breast tissue by means of a space that is called as retromammary space. Retro means behind. Mammary stands for the mammary gland. So the space that is present between the mammary bed structures and the posterior aspect of the mammary gland, it's called as the retromammary space. So this space, it contains the loose connective tissue between the glands and the structure forming the mammary bed. The importance of this space is, the breast can be freely moved over the pectoralis major muscle. The structure of the breast, it includes the skin that forms the external covering, the parenchyma that includes the glandular tissue which secretes the milk, the stroma that forms the supporting framework of the gland. So these are the three structures of the mammary gland. Coming to the skin, the skin contains nipple and areola. The nipple is a conical projection just below the center of the breast. It lies usually at the level of fourth intercostal space. Nipple is pierced by about 15 to 20 lacticiferous duct and it is very rich in nerve supply. Coming to the areola. Areola is a pigmented region of skin around the base of the nipple and contains the modified sebaceous glands, sweat glands and accessory mammary glands. Around the areola outer margin, we can appreciate the projections called as tubercle of Montgomery which becomes very prominent during the pregnancy and after the delivery. Coming to the parenchyma, parenchyma contains the glandular tissue and this glandular tissue contains about 15 to 20 lobes and each lobe it contains the cluster of alveoli that drains or it is drained by the lacticiferous duct. The lacticiferous duct as it reaches near the nipple it shows a dilatation that's called as the terminal dilatation which is called as lacticiferous sinus and this the lining epithelium it changes depending upon whether the gland is resting or it is active in the resting phase the gland is lined by the cuboidal cells during the lactation 
the shape of the cell changes from cuboidal to columnar and surrounding these glands there are something called as myoepithelial cells coming to the stroma which is a fibro fatty tissue the fibrous stroma it comprises or it forms the suspensory ligament of cooper which anchors the skin and the gland to the pectoral fascia as the age advances these fibrous tissue becomes weak of which the mammary gland slightly descends down it becomes loose coming to the fibro fatty stroma it is distributed all over the breast except beneath the areola and the nipple the structural differentiation of the mammary gland pertaining to age pregnancy and lactation so from birth to the pre pubertal life there is presence of lacticiferous duct but there are no alveoli at puberty ducts undergo profuse branching and peripheral branches it forms solid spheroidal masses of cells that means there is proliferation of alveoli so in pregnancy the proliferation and epithelial growth of the terminal ducts takes place lobes it increases in number and alveoli also increases at the 6th month of pregnancy of the breast of at the 6th month of pregnancy the breast expands due to increase in the blood flow and secretion of colostrum milk secreted in the later part of pregnancy and for a few days after the parturition that is called as colostrum so this colostrum is rich in nutrients contains the fat globules and colostrum corpuscles the true milk secretion starts after few days after parturition the during lactation the alveoli is distended with milk and during this time the alveoli is lined by the cuboidal cells in resting state or columnar cells in lactation after the lactation when the lactation stops the alveoli shrinks in size and the remaining milk is absorbed and glandular tissue it returns back to the resting condition coming to the arterial supply of the mammary gland it is supplied by the perforating branches from the internal thoracic artery this internal thoracic artery is a branch given by the subclavian artery lateral thoracic thoracoacromion and superior thoracic branches of axillary artery the lateral branches of posterior intercostal arteries coming to the venous drainage of the mammary gland the veins follow the arteries which start from a plexus at the base of the nipple the venous drainage is divided into two parts superficial and deep sets the superficial veins it drains into the internal thoracic vein and the deep veins into internal thoracic axillary and posterior intercostal veins so this superficial veins it drains the skin except the areola and nipple whereas deep set of veins it drains the parenchyma the fibrous stroma including the areola and the nipple coming to the nerve supply it is supplied by anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of 4 to 6 intercostal nerves